Hello, Nate from Performance Engineering, and today's vlog is going to be of our 991.2 GTS, which we're going to be carrying out as first service, uh, which is a minor service and inspection. Um, they carry it, you've got to carry out these every two years, um, or every 20,000 miles. Our car's just hit two years, um, so yeah, we're going to carry it out and take you through the process. All right, then, service time. This service will apply to any of the Porsche 3 litre twin turbo engines from 17 onwards, so whether you've got a GTS like what we've got, um, Carrera S or Carrera, this service should apply. The usual stuff really, engine oil and filter. Porsche recommend Mobile One 040. Um, they, take, they take around 7.5 litres, but when you measure it afterwards on a computer, um, on a dash, sometimes it reads a little bit under, so it's always best to get a little bit more. And then we've got two cabin filters, one's a pollen filter and one's a pre-cabin filter. Sump plug, um, not necessary, um, but it's worthwhile replacing. It's only a couple of pounds to replace these. Um, and then we've got brake fluid. Porsche recommend changing the brake fluid on these every two years. So if you're doing a service on your second year of, of since the car's been new you'll need this or if you're doing it on your mileage base you may not need to do it but it's always best to do it we've got two liters of this don't necessarily need two liters but we tend to drop out around about two 250 to 300 mil per caliper and we keep a little bit over then if you the top of that and then the all important center lock the gts has got the Turbo, uh, turbo alloys with a set of lock, and that's a bit of a pain to remove. Um, we'll probably do a separate video on how to remove these. It's, it's not straightforward, just undoing a bolt and then putting a straight back on. And then the cash draw alloy paste, this is what we use on the back of the center locking nut. Make sure that it's all lubricated, and it's, it's what Porsche recommends, what Porsche uses as well. Um, and then, last thing is a diagnostic unit. We're using the Mac Pro, uh, the Mac Tools ET, ETR8 for this. Uh, basically, this will just allow to do a full diagnostic check on the car, um, make sure there's no faults, or if there is faults, we can look into rectifying these. Um, but today, we'll be using it for resetting the inspection light and the oil change light. Um, most modern good quality diagnostic units will be able to do this so we don't need to use this specific one in general but this is what we've got today but i think first let's get this oil dropped out right yeah, first things first always best to take the oil engine oil cap off this just releases a little bit of pressure um, and it allows the, the engine oil to drain out a little bit easier and then we got a little a clip in here which just keeps this part of the uh, the intake system a lot bit more rigid but take this off and then the sides either side it comes right once the covers on off there's two little fans just gotta come off two little connectors for each fan quite simple so one So, and if you have a look down here, underneath the connector there's a little tab, which you push the tab down and then you slide the connector right off there. You slide it to the left, come straight out. Same for this one, straight out. And then for the fans, they just popped in, these little rubber grommets, so not too much effort required. And then you've got the one which goes into the back, straight off. Same for this one. One there. One there. And straight out. It's all right then, we've got two fans out. Next thing we've got to do, take off this air intake. Two little clips. One this side, and one this side. You can usually just pull on them a little bit and they should come out quite nicely. Uh, there you 
back out. And then, for the bonnet release, one little clip there. And then, make sure that stays in. And then, prize out, and off it comes. So now, with everything removed, you can see the oil filter housing. Oil filter housing takes a 36 mil. Shouldn't be too tight to undo, but what we will do first is drain the oil from underneath. Once that's drained off, we'll just crack this a little bit, and it should allow a little bit more fluid to drain out before we remove the actual oil filter. Right, before we actually undo the sump plug, let's have a look. Same as all the, um, the bag stuff, so the VWs, Audis, they're all the same now. A little plastic, some plug. But there's two ways where you can undo this. Got a flathead screwdriver. Straight into there and turn it. All right, there's all some plug. Straight into there. leave this drain for a couple of minutes um, and then we'll we'll go up up on top and then um, drain the oil well not drain sorry take out the oil filter so right now we left the engine oil drain for about five minutes so it just starts trickling out so what we'll do now is just put a little bit of blue, blue roll um, or a cloth of some sort just at the bottom of the I lost the other housing, so if you do, get a couple of drops. And then, 36 mil, we've got quite a long extension, half inch. Shouldn't be too tight. A couple of turns, and then, you feel the resistance stops. Do it by hand then. Right, it's off now. So as careful as possible not to get any any oil anywhere. Oil filter housing. the oil filter housing off, a little bit of blue roll again, pull the, air filter, the oil filter off, shake it a little bit, make sure that all the drops of oil just go back into the oil filter housing, and there is our oil filter. Right, with the seal, take the seal off, a quick clean around here and then a new seal just slots right over okay so on the last on the last groove sits in there quite nicely and then fresh filter you need to give it Decent little push down, and you'll feel it just locate on the bottom down. And once it's in there, you'll feel it quite nice. As long as it turns nice and freely, you're good to go. So now then, make sure you've taken all the blue roll out and that there's no, nothing actually gone into the filter housing. And it's just a case of putting the filter back in. Located. So turn nicely by hand for a certain amount. And what we'll do is we'll nip it that very loosely. 
we'll just leave it there. And what we'll do then, once we put the sump plug back in at the bottom, we'll torque this up to 25 newton meters, and then go ahead with filling it back up. Right, wouldn't usually record just putting the sump plug back in, but some people might get confused how you torque it up because it's a plastic sump plug. But basically, you just insert it in, a couple of turns, and you'll feel it locate there straight. Don't start putting too much pressure on it because you'll snap it. Yeah, once you can feel it stop, you know it's tight. Well, for the housing has been topped back up to 25 newton meters and just quickly cleaned it off. And there's a good time now just to run over the torch and just check that there. All the pipes and everything all look in good condition. Um, check some of these vacuum lines for a few solenoids, make sure that they're all okay. And even though it's kind of some very low mileage, you can just check that the oil filter is all okay. Perfectly fine, not required on this service, and yeah, it looks pretty good. But now we've got to get the air intake ducting back on. Slots over there, slots over there, on this dowel, on this dowel or rubber grommet, I should call them. So let's get this back on. Alright, so we'll locate the air duct in. You feel it there. Push it down, push it down. And then, you can see right at the back here. Make sure the end pop. Make sure this side is in. That one's in already. Right, so now we've got the air duct in back in, bonnet release back on here, cable on here, same on the other side, just in case we put the fan in. So we've got one rubber gummit here, one one there. So, so this one first. Make sure you've got this cable on the right side, and then pop, pop in there. And what we want to do with here, we'll get it on and slide it from left to right and just pop this little connector back in and then we're good to go put the put the cover back on and put a little bit of trim in here to keep this nice and rigid and we'll put some oil back in right out of curiosity i measured out the oil which just drained from the car and the car was on the minimum um there's a lighter one that's actually in engine oil on minimum put up 1.3 litres. I've just measured out 7.5 litres, so around about the eight litres should be fine. So what we'll do, we'll put in a seven and a half litres, run the car up to temperature, um, check the level on the, on, the, on the dashboard, and then add accordingly. But yeah, one quick little tip for you. If you're doing, in this case, we're going to do seven and a half. So what we've got now, we've just drained out six. <laughs> got a tip for you. Fill this up, sorry. Fill this up to 500 ml out of this. So you know you don't have to keep adding a little bit, check it, add a little bit and check it. Lots of Right, next up, we're going to replace the pre cabin filter, which is located under here. And then this got a bit of trim. Quite easy. Pop that out there. Uh, pop that out here. And then what you want to do with this. Pop this out. Tap that on there. It stays out the way. This is where the pre cabin filter is. And we've got a little, couple of locating tabs along the outside of this. One, two, and three at the back. So it's basically a case of just pulling them, popping them up, pulling them, popping them up. And then we've got these two little locating pins. Out that comes. And it's just a case of sliding this out. And yeah, a little bit dirty, not too bad. Again. Not the part number for this, you can barely see it. 
The new one, the slots in. Very lot of force needed. Slots in. With the co cover back on. Slide her in and then got the fiddly. But make sure that these two this one there. Nice. This one right at the back there. Make sure that they're in and then a lot of pushes. Cut. And now we will replace the pollen filter which is inside underneath the glove box. Right now we're under the glove box on the passenger side to take out the cabin filter and it's very simple for this one. We've got one by here, one there, One there, one there, and then this one there. So four, uh, just flat a screwdriver, turn them, and then this foam part will come down, and then you'll see the uh, what, 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 what touch base then. And now then, I'll take like five lot of screws for this. Very lot of plastic, plastic things, and then we look in here, our Having filter is situated in here. Couple a lot of pops out. Move the cabin back a little bit. One important thing here is to see we get on here is to check the direction of the airflow. So as you can see the arrow is pointing toward the front of the car. So when we put the new filter in, we'll make sure that the arrow is pointing at the same direction. But uh, yeah, let's just slide right out. A bit awkward with the one hand. Not too bad. Yeah. Yes, we'll get the new one put straight back in. Right, so we finished the majority of the service so far. We've done an engine oil change with the oil filter, replaced the cabin filter and the pre-cabin filter. And what's left to do now is just to do a brake fluid change. But on ours, we've got the centre locks and in order to do the brake fluid change, the alloy's got to come off. But we're going to do a separate video on how to remove centre locks on a Porsche. A few other lot of things that you'll also check on an inspection is things such as your tyres, make sure the tyres are in good condition, they're wearing evenly. We'll measure four points of the tire, uh, or probably four or three points of the tire to make sure that there's decent tread depth across the tire. Um, we'll also check things such as your brake pads, front and rear, make sure that they're wearing nicely. There's no inner and outer lip. Same again for your brake disc, make sure, not brake disc, brake pads. Make sure you've got a decent amount of pad material left on your pads. Um, also check your brake fluid lines, make sure that they're in good condition. Fuel lines, again, fuel lines is a lot bit difficult because a lot of it is covered and uh, runs underneath the end of trays. But we'll also check those, make sure there's no leaks. Um, and then just a few lot of things, so we'll just check all your fluid levels, make sure your fuel levels are at the, at the maximum point, which they should be. Um, but then yeah, that's everything. So let's crack on with a brake fluid service. Right, last job, brake fluid change. In order to do the brake fluid change, we've got to take off the center lock and alloys. Um, the majority of people will be doing this by themselves, so we're going to show you how to do it by yourself. It is really a two-man job for the fronts. Um, the rears are perfectly fine, but first job, get the car up off the ground and put the handbrake on. Right, that's all we need to take off the center locks is in here. So you'll have this and then inside you'll have this and this is what you use to take the cap off and also check the locking mechanism if it doesn't actually pop out. But, right, so now we're going to go ahead and take off all these, these set of caps. Um, if you look right here at the top, there's a tiny little gap there. I'm going to put your little tool in there in the hook part. Hook it right in. Tiny little pop. It comes straight out. 
very important part on this side now is this locking mechanism slides in and, in and out really really easily very important but if you check how it lines up with the teeth just near enough flush for the edge of the teeth so when you put the alloys back on you want to make sure that this is the same if it's not you can use this part push it in that's what that ends for push it in so this locking me mechanisms uh, all locked in so because these SATA locks take a lot of torque to take off you're going to need a pretty beefy breaker bar and a torque wrench uh, because these take around 440 foot pounds um, in order to torque them like this is capable of 700 newton meters so yeah perfectly fine for that these are uh, they're quarter inch drives so they'll fit onto here nicely with no adapters needed but let's crack on with the rears Rears will be perfectly fine, it's just the fronts. With the, with the fronts, you're gonna need a, a spreader clamp. Um, but I'll show you how to put this on in order to make sure that the, uh, the front alloys don't move. So, set this, the set of locking tool just needs a good little, little push. And then you hear it locking quite nicely. And then it's just a case of all. Some torque, just like that. A little bit of torque, it comes right out. I can do this with my hand now. That's the, uh, the the alloy paste which you've got to put back on. It don't look like this much on there, so don't go crazy putting putting it back on. Be careful not to damage the alloys. So yeah, it's just as easy as that. So what you want to do is start the car, um, pump the brake a couple of times, make sure that the, the, the brake pedal is nice and firm. And then you just want to insert your spreader clamp. So you can see it's on the brake pedal there. And then just on the bottom of there under a rag. Uh, you probably have to put the seat a bit forward. Um, but then yeah, the brakes will be, uh, the front tires will be nice and locked so they shouldn't move at all. And you can go ahead and crack the uh, alloys off. And if you're doing a brake fluid change, remember that once you've taken off these two front wheels, to disconnect this. Same again as the rears. Make sure they have a nice little bud in. And yeah, you gotta be careful if you're doing it on your own. Just make sure that the, uh, the front doesn't want to turn on the steering. So once you've kind of cracked the off slightly, relatively easy so what we'll do now we'll get the other side off and then crack on with the brake fluid change so what we've got for the brake fluid change is a Sealy brake bleeder and um, this just allows us to add pressure to the brake system and then we've got two liters of Porsche genuine brake fluid again like what I said earlier you don't necessarily need two liters but we tend to put 250 mil per corner and then we have a little bit extra just to top up if necessary um, but what we'll do we'll fill the fluid into here put this onto the uh, brake reservoir on the car pump it up to around about 19 psi and then slowly go ahead and start cracking the nipples on the calipers and we'll see the uh, the fluid coming through right onto the bleeding of the brakes the procedure usually is to just bleed the, the, the caliper furthest away from the master cylinder. Um, on the on these, the master cylinder is very central in the front. Um, so we'll just do on that same usual procedure. We'll usually do offside rear, near side rear, um, near side front, and offside front. And then on the Brembo calipers, you want to do the outers and inners. So bleed the outers first, close it off and then bleed the inners and then same for the fronts as well. 
So all we're going to do is 11 mil socket for this one. Get that right down there. Crack it open. Don't go too crazy. And you should start to hear. See the fluid coming out? Yeah. So what we'll do, we'll look on here. We'll wait until it gets up until around about, um, around about 125 mil. And we'll close it off and then we'll do the rears and then we'll do roughly around about 250 mil for the caliper. All right, now we've done the, the both rears. If you take a look on our bleeder, this isn't focusing, yes. Uh, it's slightly down, so obviously where we've opened the, uh, the, the nipples on both the rears, it's lost a little bit of pressure. It's hovering around about 12 psi, so now we'll just crack it back up to 20 psi and then do the fronts. So onto the fronts, same as the rears, we do the outside nipple first and then the inside nipple. Same again, 11 mil, a little bit of tubing. Um, make sure you get a little bit of blue rag just in case any of the brake fluid happens to go on the caliper or, or on the, any of the, uh, the, the paint work just so you can wipe it off quickly. But, uh, right, let's crack this one open. Yeah, we'll do the same as what we did on the rears. Um, measure out about 1.2, uh, not 1.2, 125 mil on this on this side, and then on the other side we'll do the same, 125 mil. So we're doing around about 250 mil per caliper. All calipers now bled. All that's left to do is just to release a little bit of pressure off this. And then what we gotta do then, um, make sure that we've got the right level on the brake reservoir. Start the car up, give her a couple of pumps on the brake pedal, make sure the pedal's nice and firm. Clean everything off, and then let's put the wheels back on. Last little step is to just clean off the back of the center lock. And just check the marking, there's small little markings on here. Just make sure that they're even all around. There is actually specs, which, uh, Porsche list to make sure that this is seating nice and wearing even, well not wearing but seating nice. Um, so clean this up, this mating surface, put a little bit of this and also clean this up and then just add a little fine layer of the paste and then the same again for this fine little layer on here for the paste and then get the alloy on and then we'll torque it up. Just be careful not to damage any of the components or the suspension. Right, so that's all nice. And then... <sighs> Tighten this up hand tight. And then we'll get the tool. Off. So, go and put the handbrake back on and torque it up. So we're going to just torque this up to 600 newton meters. <clears throat> and once we've torqued up to 600 newton meters, 600, take it off, and then we're going to turn it up for water. Retorque it back up again. To 600 again. And then just check to make sure that this part, we just have a look now. Nice and flush with the edge as it was. And slides in, so that's that wheel. 
all nicely talked that. So, we've got two things left to do. Uh, check our engine oil level and don't be... What will happen is, if you get this message, where is it? There. Oil level information currently unavailable. What you need to do, you need to drive the car for a little bit, get it up to temperature. And then what you've got to do, you've got to turn the car off on a level ground, leave it sit for a couple of minutes, and then if you recheck it again, um, it should come up giving you the oil level. Um, it'll either tell you that, is, that is the oil level is correct, or it may tell you to add a little bit, or you can just check on the marks where the, where the, uh, the level is. But now, we've got very messages. Two messages, inspection and engine oil change, which we will reset now. All right, so now let's go into diagnostics. Then where are we? Where are we? Porsche, Porsche, Porsche. Mm. There. Very blah. So just run into the special functions on the diagnostic unit. Um, pretty simple now. So go on to reset maintenance interval. Um, it'll ask you to input the date, so we'll input the date of today and then do an ignition cycle and then the light should reset. Right, just a quick one. Took the car for a little drive, let it get up the temperature, um, turn the car off and then let it sat on the level ground for around about a few minutes just to, just to let all the oil levels drop. Um, and then it allows you to recheck the engine oil level. Um, comes up on the dash. As you can see it says uh, we need to put in another 1.3 litres. Which given that we've put in 7.5, um, that'll take us to 8.8 .8 litres. So yeah, it backs up what, what, we, uh, what we did when we measured out what we dropped. Um, which was seven and a half, we put seven and a half in and we also had this light on prior to doing that oil change so yeah, even though Porsche states in the manual 7.5 to 8 litres in another manual um, you actually have to put in a little bit more than that but we'll put it in the 1.3, recheck it and then show you what it comes out like Just a quick update um, filled seven and a half liters initially. Start the car, let it let it get up to temperature. Took it for a quick drive, um, and then the, the the computer when we tried measuring it out, I said we need to add 1.3 liters in. So we added 1.3 liters, and now it's bang on the maximum mark. So even though Porsche quote 7.5 to 8 liters um, with a filter, they actually take a little bit more than that when if you want to get it bang on the uh, maximum level mark. But yeah spot on so that's the full service completed the minor service so this will be done at around about 20,000 miles or two years old uh, whichever comes first so we've done um, engine oil change did both cabin filter and pre-cabin filter um, and a full brake fluid change with a lot of guard on how to remove the center locks so yeah hopefully it'll be of use to somebody if they're looking to do uh, their first service on their car um, or if you're just interested in seeing how to service a uh, GTS or three litre twin turbo engines. But the next video will be of... On the dyno. We're going to get it in on the dyno. So stay tuned. <laughs>